Planet Dolan. For most people, the office is a place of boring routine where nothing interesting ever happens. But what hidden dangers lie in the stationary cupboard? What happens when your co workers go off the rails? Hear the unusual ways people have died in the office. I'm Danger Dolan, and today I will be your narrator. Number 15. George Millett was an office boy working for an insurance company in New York in 1909. On his 15th birthday, the office typist decided to give handsome George a present. The girls would kiss him 15 times. As the nervous teenager was smothered in smooches, an old fashioned bladed ink eraser in his top pocket pressed into his chest and stabbed him through the heart, killing him a few hours later. At least he has some good memories though. Number 14. Ex-politician and lawyer Clement Vallandigham was responsible for proving the innocence of a man accused of murder in a barroom brawl in 1871. At a courthouse in Ohio, Clement had figured out, through his experiments, that the victim may have handled his own gun in a way that caused him to shoot himself. In an attempt to prove suicide rather than murder, Clement staged the event himself, accidentally shooting a hole in his stomach in the process. Number 13. The heavy pressure to work harder, longer and faster takes its toll on the Japanese workforce. The high suicide rate is the result of this drive for productivity, but it's not just people taking their lives. Miwa Sodu was a 31 year old journalist at the NHK Broadcasting Corporation who died of heart failure. This was after working nearly 160 hours of overtime in one month, taking only two days off. Death by overwork is known as karoshi in Japan. Number 12. After being fired from his job at a London marketing firm, Matthew Fagan was bankrupt and desperate for money. One Saturday morning, he broke into his ex-company offices to steal computers, but he was caught by an old colleague, Kathy Marlowe, who'd come in the building to catch up on some work. Fagan immediately struck her with a hammer and strangled her to death with a scarf, leaving her body in the office shower room. Number 11. These days, the development of technology and the availability of the internet means more and more people are taking the office with them as they travel. Not wanting to waste productivity while driving, 29-year-old computer expert Oscar Hinojosa had his laptop in front of him while driving down Highway 99 in Sacramento. We know this because that's how his body was found while the laptop was still running when police investigated the wreckage of his car. Number 10. One Saturday morning, an Australian computer technician was helped back into his office to sleep off a rather heavy night. Alan had taken part in a hotel bar drinking competition where competitors had 100 minutes to score as many points as possible, with 1 point for beer and 8 points for hard booze. Alan scored 236 points and unsurprisingly never woke up from his chair. Number 9. At a UK plastics company in Business Park, a 31 year old worker suffered the kind of death that usually happens in James Bond movies. He was pulled into a large paper shredder and his body mangled to the extent that 10 days after the accident, police were still trying to identify the victim. While the machine was larger than your average office shredder, it's certainly an argument for not having to wear a tie to work. Number 8. Professor of Chemistry Karen Wetterhan was working in her office laboratory with a chemical called dimethylmercury. When she accidentally spilled no more than two drops of the substance on her gloved hand, she took the necessary precautions of cleaning the area and then removing the clothing. But this wasn't enough, as the incredible toxicity of this tiny amount of chemical led to a neurological decline and eventual death a year later. Number 7. A disgruntled employee returned to his former workplace, a trucking company, armed with a shotgun and a handgun, shouting, Y'all ruined my life! This happened, as you can probably guess, in Texas. The man killed one of his former co-workers, injured two others before turning the gun on himself. The man had been fired a few days beforehand and evidently hadn't quite cooled off yet. Number 6 in another heartwarming tale of furious gun-toting office workers, a man in Vancouver did the same after losing his job at a health food supply company, but Alan Kirkpatrick chose the workplace Christmas party on a Friday afternoon as his time to burst in and open fire, killing his ex-boss. The police managed to arrest the man later on and he was charged with first degree murder. Number 5 A tax auditor in Finland who was working at his desk died quietly on a Tuesday afternoon. The unusual and depressing part to the story is that no one even noticed he was dead until Thursday. His colleagues knew him to be a busy and sometimes solitary man, so no one disturbed him until a friend called to have lunch and his body was found in the office. Number 4 
Many of these stories involve disgruntled office workers going postal on their former employees, but the 1986 post office shooting in Edmond, Oklahoma is what gave us the phrase going postal. Angry at being reprimanded the day before, a mail carrier stormed in the office with three pistols and killed 14 of the people working there and injured a further six. The killer, who took his own life, was an ex-marine and a member of a pistol shooting team. Number three. In 1969, Steve Marshburn was working inside a bank at a teller's window. As a storm raged outside, lightning struck the teller's intercom system, sending a surge of current down Marshburn's back. The electricity caused serious damage to his spine and brain, exiting his hand via a metal stamp that he'd been holding. Marshburn himself later set up a lightning and electric shock survivors group, which now has 1,800 members globally. Number two. The office has some pretty dangerous equipment lying around like staplers, scissors and shredders, but it was a paper envelope that led to the death of a manufacturing tycoon, Sigmund Fechheimer, in 1895. After finishing a letter to his wife, Sigmund licked the gum strip on the back to seal the envelope and managed to cut his tongue. The next day, his tongue had swollen up and the blood poisoning from infection killed him shortly after. Number 1 in 1993, a group of visiting law students were being shown around the firm headquarters in downtown Toronto by company partner Gary Hoy. As he had done countless times before, Gary proudly demonstrated the strength of the unbreakable office windows by running and slamming his body into the pane of glass. The glass didn't break, but it did come out of its frame, causing Gary to plummet 24 floors while the students watched, perhaps rethinking their possible internship. This video was made possible by our fans over on Patreon. Thanks for your support, guys. That is it for this countdown. Have a good one!